Welcome everyone to the Pockets of Knowledge podcast. I'm your host, Desiree Stanley. And with me today is my guest, Jackie Lawrence. Welcome to the show, Jackie. I'm so excited to have you on. We're going to be touching on some really great topics and I am so thrilled that you're here. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for inviting me on. It's an honor to be here. I actually heard of Jackie on another podcast and I was so interested in the topics that she was talking about that I said, she just has to come on the show and share this information with my listeners. And so you are here today to talk about uh, wellness, health, clean eating, vibrational energy. We're going to touch on Reiki, which again is like that vibrational energy that's in the body. And so Jackie, I'm so excited. First of all, I want to know what was it that kind of launched you on this journey and got you started on a wellness and, and clean eating journey? Yeah. So it really stemmed from just kind of my experience growing up. I just experienced a lot of health issues, mostly in my stomach, digestion, menstrual cycle issues, and just trying to navigate around that and figuring out what, what was going on with me it was just, I felt so lost in that. And going to the you know mainstream doctors were helping. They just kept kind of prescribing me medications that would make me even more sick. And so it was just kind of a journey of really discovering wellness for myself, and educating myself on the ways that are going to be beneficial for our health and figuring out some of those issues that we encounter in our lives. So, yeah, and that was just a, kind of a self-exploration. You know, I was kind of looking for answers from my family and the education system, and I really felt stuck a lot of times and I was like well it seems like this is a journey that I need to take and then do my own research and take my health into my own hand. Yeah that's a good point. Sometimes the traditional medicine isn't the solution and it sounds like you went that route and it really wasn't helping you in any real meaningful way and about how long has that that journey been for you like when did that start? And how many years have you kind of been going through that? Yeah, I would say for as long as I remember from being a child, like just having problems with my stomach, you know, there were some days that I just couldn't even get out of bed. You know, I had to go to the urgent care, emergency room, just, I was like, I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm I'm going to die. And then nobody is giving me the answers. And so, yeah, it was just a really... I guess a kind of a desperation too. Like I, I just really wanted to find a solution to this. I, I couldn't believe that this was going to be the rest of my life, just dealing with this pain. Yeah. And, and that's not what anybody wants, right? I mean, that can lead to depression and some other things too. When you think like, this is how it's going to be forever, that can be kind of scary too. So tell us then, what initially did you start looking into in terms of like a solution? Was it the clean eating part of it that really was the thing that prompted the start and into everything else that you began doing? Yeah, definitely. The clean eating. I always gravitated more to vegetarian diets, like even just as a child, like for some reason, consuming meats was always something that I just felt very repulsed by. And it was something that I almost kind of had to force myself to consume because I thought that's what we needed to eat to be healthy. And then, you know, as I just kind of started experimenting with different diets and I realized, wow, I'm feeling a lot better eating a cleaner diet, eating a diet with more fruits and vegetables, and more living food. Now, yeah, that really, I think, jump-started the whole trajectory of just exploring the diet and then eventually, you know, cutting out a lot of animal products and processed foods. And that really just shifted my vibration. And I was, like, wow, there's something going on here. I want to keep going. And that eventually led me to study plant-based nutrition and then dive into some more wellness practices from there. Yeah. And that's something that I think a lot of people are really starting to see is how beneficial that 
living diet is, like the fruits and the vegetables and things that are raw and not overcooked and certainly not processed really does make a difference in how our body works with that food, right? Definitely. Yeah. And another element too is just thinking about how those foods are really provided from the earth, you know, that just naturally it's like, oh, here you go. Here's here's your sustenance and your vitality. <laughs> Yeah. So once you kind of got that started, you said you really could feel a shift in in how your body was feeling. And talk to us a little bit about that. Like what kind of began happening after that point? You obviously started feeling better because of the foods that you were eating. Yeah, I felt just a huge shift in my energy. Whereas before, you know, I always kind of felt a little bit lethargic or tired. It seemed like I was tired a lot. And just putting those kind of foods in my body, just, I felt so vibrant. You know, when you're putting vibrancy in your body, you're going to feel vibrant. And so I felt like I could start thinking clearer. Like I said, my energy skyrocketed. I was just working out all the time or just wanting to be outside. And I feel like that just ricocheted into all areas of my life. And I was like, wow, it's just cleaning up my diet and the food that I'm consuming is affecting me. What else can I clean up that I'm consuming? You know, because we consume on different levels, whether that's through music, entertainment, things that we put on our skin or clothing. So yeah, it just it just sparked the curiosity in me and me to like explore all these other apps. Yeah. And that's something that you had mentioned is in terms of consuming and it's The things that we're watching on television, the things that we're listening to, the things that we're reading, that's what we're feeding our mind, right? And so not only are you eating clean to feed your body, which does also feed your mind, but those things like entertainment and stuff, as you said, makes a difference in how your brain functions. Talk to us a little bit about that. What did you find out? Yeah, so when we think about how the mind works, and our thoughts. Our thoughts create our reality. So our thoughts create neurotransmitters, which are biochemicals. And these produce like an emotional response. And then this produces an emotional frequency. Mm. And so when we have this level, a certain frequency, we attract things that match the energy. So, you know, if we are listening to things that aren't so uplifting, that are so positive or encouraging, you're going to kind of create a reality for yourself that's not going to uplift you, that's not going to move you forward in life. So I feel like, you know, exploring the stories that we're telling ourselves or the stories that other people are telling ourselves. Mm. I feel like a lot of that stuff just really resonated with me in terms of kind of going back to my health journey too. I was telling myself certain stories like, oh, you know, my stomach is this way. It's going to be this way the rest of my life. That's just how I was designed. That's how, you know, I just kept telling myself that story over and over again. And then eventually when, you know, some healing was happening, I was like, wow, this isn't my story anymore. You know, being able to release that and create a new story for myself. That was one of, wow, we, we have the power to heal ourselves. We have the power to create whatever reality we want for ourselves. And so that's where talking about vibrational energy, right? And how that plays into the world that we're experiencing. Yes, obviously there are things that are happening externally, but we can kind of choose what we want to focus on, right? And there's that expression, what you think about, you bring about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not a coincidence that that expression exists, right? Definitely. Yeah. So talk to us now about how 
Reiki came into your life and what kind of inspired you to explore that? Yeah. So I've always been into different energy work, body work. I grew up with my family. My grandma and I were just very into massages. That was a huge healing tool for us. And learning more, I'll talk a little bit more about this later too, about human design and learning that I explore the world through my hands. When I heard that, I was like, oh, wow, that really clicks for me because I really like to use my hands to heal. Mm. And so I was just exploring different modalities of that. And I was like, well, I know I'm really into energy work and massage. What else can I do to empower and like healing, facilitate healing for others? And so I do have some friends that were into Reiki and after going and experiencing some sessions myself, I was like, oh, this is a very interesting tool. I'd like to explore this more. And so I just took some classes and then got my certification. And I've been just practicing on myself and my partner and my plants. (laughs) And so, So, yeah, I I just feel like it's a very powerful tool. Kind of reminds me of like what Jesus was doing. People know laying of the hands and stuff like that and how powerful our hands can be to heal ourselves. Yeah. So I was going to have you just take a step back for a minute because there may be people who are listening who have no idea what Reiki is or what we're talking about. And so let's take a step back, talk about what it is exactly and how it works and what the purpose is. Yeah. So Reiki is just a tool for facilitating healing. Generally, somebody kind of taps into source energy, universal love energy, and kind of channels that through their body and facilitates healing for someone. Now, we're not necessarily healing someone. We're facilitating the possibility of healing for that person, for them doing the heal, if that makes sense. <laughs> it does. And so you're talking about working with your hands and you like a healing energy that you're assisting the person to do the healing for themselves. And so what exactly is happening? Energy in the body, as we know, if you've done any kind of studying on, you know, chi energy and, and that sort of thing, this talking about energy that flows through the body and sometimes it can be trapped in places. And so talk to us a little bit about that and like how we maybe get that moving and or released. Yeah, so usually during a session, you do a protection of the space, you pull in the energy and then you use your hands to kind of facilitate the flow of the energy. And so this could be, you know, directly placing your hands on someone, could be just, you know, hovering your hands over someone. You can also do it through distance too. And with more advanced levels, you can also use like symbology with that too. There's different symbols for distance healing, things like that. So yeah, the person generally is just kind of laying down, relaxing, closing their eyes. And you're just kind of facilitating the session with them. You do kind of an assessment to just get a sense of what they're going through. And then during the session, once you're kind of attuned to the energies, you can tell where a person is holding a lot of energy or if the energy is just stagnant. Sometimes it's the feeling of just extra heat in an area. Everybody kind of senses it differently, but that is a little bit of what goes on. Okay. Then for the person that is, say, going through this and wants to work on, you know, moving that energy and releasing that, what do they need to be working on? Is it like a visualization? Is it something, you know, that they do specifically? You know, every facilitator does it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will kind of like guide you through maybe a meditation to kind of relax you but really the person is just kind of like focusing on their breath and if they want healing in a certain area kind of calling that guidance into that area 
You talked a little bit with me about how faith is a big part in healing. And you just mentioned earlier a little bit about Jesus with laying of the hands for healing. And so tell us a little bit more about that. How do you feel like faith has a lot to do with the healing process? I feel like when we connect with our creator, you know, I know everybody has kind of different interpretations and ideas of what that is, but, you know, however you want to connect with a higher God source, but when you have that connection, I feel like it just really gives you that resiliency and fortitude to move through anything in your life. Just knowing that God has your back always, Mm -hmm. you know, God wants the best for all of us. And even through challenges of our life, they might seem like, oh, why am I experiencing this? Why am I going through this? And, you know, we don't really understand the big picture of things. But when we have that faith that everything that's happening to us is for our greater good, I think that kind of attitude and mental fortitude just really helps you through anything in life. Yeah. And you just mentioned something. When something is happening to you, it's really for you. And I think that that reframing sometimes is really important in how you can approach something when you think, is this happening for me? And and what benefit is it for me? that I can grow from this or learn from this, or, you know, is this sort of launching me in a new direction? And I think that 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 kind of reframing in your mindset makes a big difference, right? Yes. I think think that also touches on the vibration that you want to be when you want to attract good things in your life, you need to be having good things in your mind. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The attitude of gratitude. That's another expression that, you know, has been around for a long time because really when you're thinking about the good things that you have in your life and you're thankful for those things in your life, it's like you're attracting more of those things because you're projecting it. You're telling the universe, this is what I want in my life. (laughs) Yeah. I'm thankful for what I have. I appreciate all that I have at whatever level it is, even just I, I'm thankful for the house I have that covers me and protects me or the shoes I get to wear today, big or small. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. that just being thankful, right? Definitely. Let's talk a little bit more about the clean eating side of things. And where did you find some of the information that kind of helped you determine that that was really a direction that you wanted to go? And you did mention something about for yourself, just even it felt kind of weird to eat animal protein. And so it sounds like for you, it just was more of a natural thing. But for somebody who's maybe like trying to discover what's a good direction to go for eating, is there, you know, resources that they could find? Yeah, there's a lot of resources. I'm just trying to think of what the best resource would be. I really like to watch a lot of nutritionfacts.org. He just is very up to date on the research and really dives into studies, kind of breaks things down. So I feel like that's a really great resource. Dr. Michael Greger, he also wrote a book, How Not to Die, which I Mm. think is a great book for people to read too, just to understand a little bit more about plants because a lot of us didn't grow up learning about different sources of plants and what their makeup and food combination and all of that. And so I feel like, you know, doing a little research and kind of seeing what some of the scientific studies are behind that too can encourage you to be like, okay, I feel a little bit more confident in trying some of this stuff. Yeah, and I want to just bring up a documentary that was done that was kind of life-changing for myself and, and our family. And that was Forks Over Knives, which is the... 100 year study that they did in China and talking about um, eating plant more than animal and what a difference it made in the cancer cells of the body because we do have cancer cells. It's whether or not we're feeding them. 
And that was a huge thing for us watching that documentary. But I will for sure include the resources that you just named in the show notes so people can look those up. Because I think that anybody who is kind of curious about what can I eat that's going to give me energy and be healthy, you know, they want to have as many resources as possible to make sure that they understand what they're getting. Because I think people are so confused about how much protein we need to have and where we need to get that protein from, right? And so having those resources, I think are super beneficial. So thank you for sharing those. Well, let's talk a little bit about some ways that we can fast track our practices around wellness and eating. Yeah. So I would recommend for everyone to do like a gut cleanse. Most of us weren't raised on a plant-based diet. <laughs> so we no. have all sorts of fun stuff in our guts that have really built up this toxic load and really affect our health that we don't realize. So doing a gut cleanse, especially a parasite cleanse, because we mm. all have parasites. I know it's not a fun thing to talk about, but we all do just because of the environments we live in, what we're exposed to. So that is a major thing because I don't think people realize how powerful parasites can be in controlling our thoughts, what kind of foods we want to eat, all those sorts of things. I feel like really cleaning those out is going to really help fast track our wellness. So that's one, filtering our water, making mm. sure we're filtering out fluoride. That's really going to help us detox our pineal gland. And why that's so important is because our pineal gland really helps regulate our circadian rhythms, our melatonin, and it also affects our reproductive hormones. Mm. If you're having like problems sleeping or having problems with your hormones or things like that's really going to be hard to move forward unless you really detoxify your pineal gland, which is mostly caused from fluoride. <laughs> and then my third thing is really like learning about yourself. And when people ask me, what does that mean? Well, like learning about your human design, for example, I feel like human design is a great system for really deep diving into yourself, learning about your mechanics, how your energy works, your strengths, your direction in life, like your chart can guide you through all of that. And mm -hmm. I feel like it's been such an immense help for me. Yeah, those are great. And, you know, we've been hearing so much about gut health, I think more frequently than in the past and talking about how important it is to have a healthy gut. And again, like with the parasites, as you mentioned, I mean, that's another huge thing that no, we don't want to think about it. <laughs> we really don't want to think about it, but it does have such a huge impact on our overall health, right? Yeah. Thank you for bringing those up. And, you know, I don't think most people, besides high school biology, I don't think many people know really how our bodies function. And so looking into the mechanics, like you said, I think that's a fantastic recommendation to to truly understand how our body is meant to function. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome. So tell me, Jackie, how many hours a day do you think that you spend with your wellness practice? I would say the majority of my day. Okay. <laughs> no, I was trying to break down this question and I was like trying to do the hours and stuff. And I feel like I've oriented my life around implementing so much wellness in my everyday life. So kind of putting an hour, I was trying to break down everything. It's pretty much the majority of the day, you know, 80 to 90% of the day, because I consider properly feeding myself, properly hydrating myself, getting adequate rest, making sure to get some sunshine, making sure to get sunlight on my eyes, like mm. all these things that we do throughout the day. I really feel like our wellness practices. 
You know, and for people who are working full time and trying to figure out like meals to make and have kids to go to events and whatever, it can seem a little overwhelming, like trying to add this too. But how important is it to have good health? I mean, I think that's probably the most important thing, right? I mean, if you don't have your health, how are you going to be able to carry out the rest of the things you want to do in your life? Like I said, in my earlier days, in my childhood or teenage years, I laying in bed because I couldn't get out of bed because I was in so much pain, you know, that that was several days of the month. Yeah. So, you know, when I switched over my diet or started doing wellness practices and I was just able to function, I was like, oh, wow, this is a whole different kind of life. You know, my partner and I always talk about we want to be implementing these things now so that we can be around for our grandkids we can go run around with them we can play with them like we can still move and be healthy and see them grow yeah that's such a good point because if you don't have your health what can you give to anybody else so you can't really be there for your family you don't have the energy really for your job and yeah i think that it is the number one priority is to make sure that your health is in place so that you can do the things that you want to do you're absolutely right i totally agree you really can't pour from an empty cup, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, they say these things because they're true, right? You cannot give to others if you don't have anything to give. Yeah. So let's talk now a little bit about some more things that we can do to raise our vibration level. We talked a little bit about what we're consuming in terms of foods and what we're consuming in terms of what we see on television, what we're reading, what we're listening to. Let's talk a little bit more about what we can do to raise the vibrations. Yeah, I think those are all great points. And I think personal development really plays a key part in here. And learning about yourself and learning how to live in the present moment. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a huge one. So, you know, working on self-love, self-worth, forgiveness so that you can move on from past. I feel like those are really great things to focus on. And when we can really know who we are, really connect with that, I feel like you can move in much more powerful ways because you have that anchor. You, you always know where you stand in your heart and nobody can take that away from you. Yeah. So what would you suggest that people do to help them kind of reflect and really figure out what those things are for them, what's important to them? Because I think we go through life just like go, 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 go. And, and we don't often take time to have those moments to reflect. So what do you suggest? Incorporating some kind of meditation practice. You know, it doesn't have to be long. People always think, oh, I can't sit down for 30 minutes or anything. Well, why don't you just sit down for five minutes? Everybody has five minutes where they can take the time to sit with themselves. Maybe that means sitting in silence. Maybe that's guided meditation. Whatever it feels like, it resonates with you. But really taking time for yourself because you can't really separate yourself from all the external things that are happening if you don't take that time for yourself. That's a good point. I would also suggest maybe like doing some kind of breath work. Breath work is very powerful. YouTube is a wonderful resource these days. You can find pretty much any and every thing on there now. So, you know, just type in breath work. You can explore different modalities. There's different techniques. That's just a really great way to be able to reduce your stress levels, connect with yourself, and raise your vibration, ultimately. And then, yeah, just kind of tying back to self-love and just reflecting on the things that you're saying to yourself throughout the day, 
you know, how you're reacting to things. Again, the stories that you're telling yourself throughout the day that can play a major role in how your life is unfolding. So if you notice, hey, some of these things I'm saying to myself aren't so uplifting or positive, maybe I can switch that. So just trying to be more aware of how we're reacting, what we're thinking about, and making small changes. I think that's a key part is like, it doesn't have to be a huge shift. We can start making these small changes every day. And eventually you're like, oh, wow, I really feel like something is shifting now. And maybe you want to incorporate more of that in your life. And then it just becomes a part of your life. <laughs> that's such a great point, even starting with five minutes. And, you know, I've had guests on who've talked before about Atomic Habits, which is a, a really great book that talks about just those small incremental changes that lead to big changes. Another book that's really great that talks about that is The Slight Edge. And it's, as you said, just starting with a little bit of time and then you like begin to feel how much better that is that you want to spend more time doing it and eventually just like realize how incredible it feels and the real change it's made in your life just starting from that five minutes. And I love that. I think that's such a great thing to remember is that it doesn't have to be 30 minutes, an hour of, you know, trying to sit there and meditate, which is challenging for sure, especially if you've never sat quietly before. It's something that, you know, takes some time to build like a muscle, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's great advice, just even starting with five minutes and going from there. And I love that you mentioned YouTube as a resource because Absolutely. There's so much information that's available to us now, you know, at our fingertips if we just look for it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. And talking about the breath work, you know, sometimes I think people get lost in the terminology. And really, when you're saying breath work, what are you meaning by that? So just doing certain patterns of breathing. So it could just be like breathing in for four seconds, holding it for two seconds, breathing out for five seconds, or doing different kind of patterns of that, or breathing in through the nose, exhaling through the mouth, breathing in the mouth, exhaling through the nose. Like there's just, yes, breathing, but there's different patterns and techniques to that. And again, that's something that you can find on YouTube is people teaching others how to do that, right? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So tell us, Jackie, what do you think that would be the most important thing to begin right now? Because we've talked about a number of things so far, eating, breathing, meditating, the Reiki. What do you think that somebody should do initially to kind of just even get started in making some of these changes? I personally feel that Connecting with a higher source has been just a very powerful tool with starting out anything in your life. Just having that consistent anchor in your life to know that God has your back. God has your back. And even though other elements in your life, maybe you don't feel supported in or you don't have anybody, you always have God to turn to. Mm -hmm. And I really like to. I know there's a lot of people that don't necessarily believe in that, but, you know, finding some connection to a higher source, I feel is just very powerful. And then again, like kind of looking at your diet and like putting you in your body. When I say diet, I'm not just referring to food, but <laughs> <laughs> that for everybody. I think just like bringing awareness to our lives, what we're doing, what we're implementing what we're putting into our bodies, in our minds, in our souls. So it really is a whole, a whole shift. One change leads to another yeah. in a way too. So when you start to make some changes in this area, it rolls over into other areas of your life and your body and your existence. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So Jackie, tell us now what tools would you say that we 
can use to maximize our potential? I would say, so kind of jumping off the meditation part, prayer and intention, Mm. really focusing our attention on what we want in our lives and not giving energy to the things that we don't want, which can be very easy to do. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Again, moving more towards like plant-based living, more alkaline lifestyle. I kind of like to refer to it as superfoods, sunfoods. Those are great things to utilize. Breath work again. Visualization. I don't know if we've really dived into that, but tying back into like the power of our minds and the things that we think about. So when we can purposely create a vision for ourselves and consistently tap into that vision paired with the emotions that you feel when you are experiencing that vision, I feel like that can manifest things into our lives way faster. And we don't often know when or how things are going to come into our lives. But when we have that consistency with our vision, I feel like that's just a very powerful tool for maximizing whatever you want in your life. Again, the self-talk and self-love. I feel that's like, a very important thing to tie into how powerful our hearts are. I don't know if you've looked into the electromagnetic field of our hearts, but it's the strongest organ for radiating kind of field in our body. And so I feel like when we have such a strong love and connection to ourselves and our hearts, and the visions that we hold, that's a great way to maximize our potential. I love that. You touched on quite a few things that I think are so great. Number one, you did mention alkaline diet. And I want to bring that back up for a second because what they have found is how important it is for us to have a diet that's away from the acid, right? And that end of the spectrum of the pH level and more to the alkaline. Can you share with us maybe some types of foods that are more alkaline? Yeah. So the majority of fruits and vegetables are alkaline. You know, there's some debates in the field over the specifics of which fruits and veggies are, but in general, fruits and vegetables tend to be alkaline. If you just think about the effects that it has on our body, and our energy. Foods that are more acid producing tend to digest slower, kind of make us not feel as energetic, make us not feel as like alive, as vibrant. I feel like watermelon is a great one. Cucumbers, those two are some of my favorites to like play with. Yeah, just in general fruits, grapes, Melons are really great too. That's great. Thank you for sharing those. Just to kind of give a point of reference for people. I mean, some of it is a little bit common sense, right? We can we can see what something's maybe more acidic than something else. And so the pH level is going to be different, right? But just, you know, for a point of reference, I think that that was helpful. And talking again about the heart and the energy, and you mentioned electromagnetic and that the energy coming from the heart. And so talk to us a little bit more about that in terms of what that does and how that has a role in how we feel and the energy that we're putting off to others. I like to say that we are being the love. Our purpose here is to love and be loved. Or at least that's how I feel about myself. (laughs) And so when we can really attune to our heart and really know the guidance that is there, that can create just such a ripple effect in our life. They say that you're more likely, if you have a neighbor that's happy or just more positive, it increases your chances of being happy or cheerful. 
60 percent or something like that so i feel like really when we activate that power of our heart that can really radiate out and just create this like i said kind of a ripple effect kind of encompass everybody in that loving vibration thank you for sharing that talking about what effect it has on our immediate neighbors, affects our communities, which affects the state, which affects the country, which affects the world, really. And it just starts with us. And it starts with each of us. And so I think that's a huge point to remember is what effect that we can have because we, I think, can often feel very small and like we have no effect on what's happening in the world when we do have so much more power than we think we do. Yes. Yeah. But we are all individually working on that for ourselves. Like, imagine how that affects the collective consciousness. Yeah, for sure. Well, I have so enjoyed our conversation, Jackie. Thank you again for sharing this information with us. And I always like to ask my guests if there's any books that they've read or are reading that they'd like to suggest that the listeners check out or if there's any podcasts that you want to suggest, I'd love for you to share those with us now. Yeah, I actually have a few books with me here that I'm currently kind of studying and looking at. So this is The Subtle Body. I don't know if you can see that with the light reflection by Cindy Dale. And it's an encyclopedia of your energetic anatomy. So it just kind of goes through different energetic systems, different traditions, and just, it's a tool for like helping you to learn more about your energetic body, which I don't think a lot of people are really aware of. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Thank you for sharing that. And I'll be sure to include the title and author in the show notes so listeners can check that out. That's a fantastic suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. And then I do have a book that I'm reading on my Audible. The Quantum Human by Karen Curry Parker. So if you want to dive into human design and learn more about that, she is a great resource, Karen Curry Parker for human design. She's talking about kind of some of the shifts that are happening in our internal hardware. She talks about kind of the splitting of some of our chakras or energy centers and just kind of our evolution of consciousness and some of the things that are happening in our current times. So if you kind of want some guidance around that, that's a great book to look into. Oh, yeah, that sounds excellent for sure. Definitely want to check that out. And then how about any podcasts that you are listening to that you'd like to suggest? I, I don't feel like I consistently listen to a podcast. I kind of dabble here and there. I've kind of been dabbling in just like some human design ones, specifically about projectors. That's what I am. So yeah, there's one that's called the projector movement that I've been listening to just to understand myself a little bit more. Oh, that's great. Because I think there's probably other people who are similar in that respect and might want to check that out to see, is that something that applies to them, makes sense to them, just even to expand your mind, right? To learn yes. a new perspective. I think that's awesome. Thank you for suggesting it. So Jackie, is there any way that people can connect with you to learn more about you and what you're doing, your journey, you know, just the knowledge that you have, can you share where they might be able to connect with you? Sure. Right now, I would say kind of the area that I use to share my information is Instagram. So you can follow me at Raw Cosmic Arts on Instagram. Okay, perfect. And so that's the best way then to follow you and to connect with you if they wanted to reach out with any questions or anything like that. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Jackie. I so appreciated you coming on the show today to share this information with us. I truly appreciate your time and your knowledge. Thank you. Thank you so much, Desiree, for having me. Of course. We'll talk soon. Okay. Sounds great.